Verse number five. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. So, again, another difference between the angels. They said the world to come are not, angels aren't ruling the world to come. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. So man is, is in, the, you know, in the pecking order. Man's made a little lower than the angels. Thou crownedst him with glory and honor, and did set him over the works of thy hands. So even though man wasn't made higher than the angels, man has been given a more superior position in the sense that they're being put, given dominion over God's creation and, and being put in charge of things and where those that were, that were higher are ministering spirits. It's, you know, the first shall be last, the last shall be first. You know, if you're a servant, you're going to be a, a ruler. If you're a ruler, you're going to be servant, things like that. That's, that's how God functions and God operates consistently throughout Scripture. You're going to see over and over again that that concept and it's it's the same thing with angels angels were made hey they're made with a lot of glory and honor in one sense but they're made the ministers and the servants right and you know what praise god for that but then we're made lower we're more base of a creature but then god has crowned crowned us with some glory and honor um verse 8 says thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing uh, that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Now, when it says in verse 6, one in a certain place testified, saying, this is a quote from Psalm 8, verses 4 through 6. And I'll read it for you. You can look down at Hebrews 2. You'll see that this is exactly what's being stated here, verses 4 through 6. And Psalm 8 says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Same thing that we see here in Hebrews 2, 6 through 8. Now, what's great about this is that there is a dual application of this passage. There's the, the surface one, I believe, where he's talking about man in general. He's comparing man with angels. He's saying, hey, what is man anyways? Like, who, who is man? Wow, what, what a great thing that God just considered man who, I mean, we're lower than the angels, everything else, but he's still given us this, this great job. He's given us glory and honor and, and is putting us in a great position. And we're going to be in charge of the world to come. We're going to be ruling and reigning with God and Christ. And wow, how amazing is that for simple man to be put in that position? That is absolutely true. And this is a church thing. But we're also going to see that this is also specifically talking about Christ. And this is applied to Christ specifically here, especially when this phrase Hey, not, not yet are all things put under him. On the one hand, not yet are all things put in subjection yet, because we're not ruling and reigning with Christ. Everything is not in our dominion. Now, man in general has dominion over the creation, but not everything yet has been put in place from that perspective. Now, from the perspective of Christ... And I want you to see this, too, before, before we, I'm going to be turned to 1 Corinthians 15, but before we turn there, notice these similarities. So, from the man perspective, and we're looking at that quote from Psalms, it says that, Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, in verse 7, Thou crownedst him with glory and honor. Look at verse 9 in Hebrews 2, but we see, Jesus, now specifically talking about Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, just like it said that man was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, just like it says, thou crownedst him with glory and honor. But Christ's glory and honor is a little bit different than our glory and honor. Wouldn't you say? The glory and honor that we can receive from God, first of all, is only going to come through Christ anyways. We don't have our own glory and honor. So what man receives, now you could say it's a glory and honor that God would even allow man to be in a position to have dominion over the world. Okay, but that's nothing compared to the glory and honor that Christ has received by being made like a man, being made lower than the angels 
for the suffering of death. That was the reason why he was made lower than the angels, for the suffering of death. And because of that suffering of death, that's why he's able to be crowned with glory and honor. So this passage in Psalm 8 that's being quoted in Hebrews 2, it's also showing us how specifically this is a prophecy of Jesus Christ. While on the one hand you can read it and be like, yes, this applies to mankind in general, but more specifically, this is much more specifically a prophecy of Jesus Christ, and these are exactly the reasons why. And it's, it, it couldn't be clearer, Hebrews 2.9, saying we see Jesus, he's a subject, and applying that passage to 